Hello and welcome to another episode of Veterinary Ramblings. My name is Mike Brampton. And my name is Julian Hode. <laughs> what a week. Oh, well, cheers, well, Julian. Cheers, Mike. Cheers, yeah. Mike. What, Mike, that? you got some crud in your, in your drink there. You want to just wipe around the surface? Something's oh, this. dropped in from... Ah, oh, no, I'll, I'll tell you more about this later. Okay, okay, I'll all right. I'll more about all this right. and I'll explain that to you in a little while. And, and that's interesting, actually, because I think this evening's guest has also got an affinity with Scotland and the Scottish Isles. Has he? He has. And that is where this particular gin, this isn't a, an Orkney uh, gin like the Kirkiver that we've been drinking. Mm. This one actually comes from just north of Edinburgh. I'll explain ah. that later. But, this uh, one is just slightly um, east of, of Edinburgh. All right. Um, yeah. Well, a long way east of Edinburgh. A long way east of... Yeah, yeah, longish. Hi, I'm Mike Brampton. And my name is Julian Ho. Welcome to Veterinary Ramblings. I, I want to move right on without further ado to introducing this evening's special guests, if I could. Um, a gentleman I think we, we both know and, we do. and love. We do indeed. Um, lovely, lovely gentleman, heavily involved in veterinary anaesthesia and who has recently started working at Cambridge University Veterinary ah, School, which is... And has just published an excellent book, which we'll talk about in a minute. Let's, well, let's get our guest for tonight in... Ian Self. Ian. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Can, oh, hang on. Let me, let me sort out my screen. Hello. Good evening. I love the picture, Ian. What, what, are, picture. You doing, what are you doing to that gorgeous-looking dog? That gorgeous thing. Well, I was, as you know, I'm rather a big chap, and I'd left my lunch at home that day, so <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was going to take a chunk, but the, the nurses quickly whipped it off me, so I was, I was good. Sorry, let me just turn on my video. Other carnivorous meals are available. <laughs> yes. Evening. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Nice Hi, to see you. Yeah. Good. You too. Yeah. Great, it's great to see. Reasonably you. good. We, I've, I've been having an argument with, with Julian, he, yeah, because um, I, I understand from, from what I've learned that you've got a soft spot for um, Scotland, and in, in particular some of the products from Scotland. That's right, yes. Yeah. So I, I was explaining to Julian how this evening's gin actually uh -huh. comes from Scotland. Okay. Uh, and he felt that his gin also came from Scotland. Well, it's, it's from the area. It's slightly east of Edinburgh. It is indeed. If I... <laughs> it, it, it's rock you. It's rock yes. you. Yeah. Hey, hey, you Jimmy. Hang on, I'm going to have to put these on. Oh, yeah, yeah I see now. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's rather east. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Slight, slightly east, but I think it still has the uh, the, the very sort of Scottish Highland flavour to it. But I, but I do. You're absolutely right. I love Scotland because I was in Edinburgh for three years, and you might notice that I I collect one of the particular products from Scotland. Just um, behind you, yes, you collect this. Oh, no, 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 no. You got it wrong. Actually, downstairs, I collect haggis. So I've got <laughs> a, a whole selection of haggis downstairs. Do you breed them? 20. Uh, no, no, no. We don't have the hills in Staffordshire, which is where I live, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, as you know, haggis have a short leg on one side and, and long they, on the they other. They run around the hill, don't exactly. they? Yeah, they yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, you, you, you're right. It is, it is the odd whiskey that I have now and again. And um, yes, I have one or two behind me. And more in the closed bits underneath, but I'm not going to show you in there because uh, I don't know. I don't know if I've got any bodies in there, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not going to be open. It's, it's, so you, it's obviously you, a very long lens here, Ian, because that, they look like remarkably small bottles. No, I, I is, just, is the cupboard I, very I'm, far away? That's right. I'm incredibly rich and live in a very large house. And so, uh, yeah, we're, we're talking about 200 metres behind me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have my men come around and swap them and, and dust them every now and again. So, yeah, yeah, no, that's good. What are you drinking then? Um, yeah, th please. This evening, uh, a cheeky little number with legs. Oh, oh, very nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a scapper. It's an, an Orkney whiskey. The bottle there. A little bottle of scapper. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice Indeed, little yes. Orkney whiskey. Well, with honey notes and some tropical fruit in there and just a hint of the seaside. 
mm. is what it I'm says in the a, bottle. <laughs> I'm going to have a little glass of that later. Very nice. A gold Let's reserve. A gold reserve, yes. I, I should say for, for listeners that, uh, that can't actually see the visual uh, things, ah. the, the gentlemen are now proudly showing off different bottles of uh, <laughs> particular distilled <laughs> Scotch spirits. Um, <laughs> a scapper from Orkney from me, and, and uh, what's that you've got there? Uh, a Car- Cardo. It's a, it's a Cardi. It's a Cardi. And to my embarrassment, I don't know where Cardi is from. It's a Murrayshire, I think. Mm, it is, I think. I think it's, oh, it is, uh, yes. There we go. Murrayshire. Yeah. Listed as Highland, isn't it? Mm. I, th- I think Mike's got some bottle envy, though, here. I, th- I think that's the trouble. I, I can see he's, he's a little bit envious. I've just realised, guys, we look like three boiled eggs on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm a really bit like, like a... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah, yes. Pineapple, right. yeah. That's, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. What, what do you think that's for then, Ian? Ah, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. So I, am, uh, I am worried, though. Do you see behind that? I'm a bit worried about my bromeliad. Um, <laughs> I was looking back over, over the previous episodes, and it's gone pale. It has. So I've repotted it today. The um, uh, the roots are slightly rotten. I think I, I'd overwatered oh, yeah. it. Um, which is, is something I don't tend to do with, with these fellas here, my orchids. I spray those daily. I don't tend to water them as such. But I, I think I've overwatered the bromeliad. So <laughs> there we go. I'm a bromeliad killer. Well, I'm, I'm just I'm like saying forward. bromeliad. I'm looking forward to the barber's opening during this COVID lockdown. Um, yeah, that's going to be a bit wild and rugged there, isn't it? It's a bit, isn't it? It's. Um... So, yeah. sad, sadly, it's my eyebrows that get out of control. Nothing else. So. <laughs> my wife trims mine occasionally. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, I sit it's down like that in the evening and play with them. <laughs> yeah, then I get told off when I do that. Yeah. Do you? Yes, I do. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, does, know, does my wife have your number? <laughs> Oh dear! <laughs> I'm not going to go there. For that. <laughs> <laughs> we better have oh, a dear. drink for that. Yeah. We better have a absolutely. Uh, very nice. So I was, if I if I appear a bit tired tonight, I do apologise. I was some, um, I was reading till very late last night. Uh, you know, when you get a good book, you just can't put it down, can you? Mm. And. Um, I was, I, I've got to finish it. I thought I've got to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've I've not read it either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have read it. Actually. But to the audience that can't see, Julian is actually holding uh, a book entitled "Pain Management," which, um, to those of who us who know, um, was edited by Ian Self himself. And uh, Ian, Ian, pain management is actually one of your one of your big interests, isn't it? I think it, it's yeah, it's it's a huge a huge thing that I I I, I, I realise I used to say I'm into pain, but I, that that goes down the wrong way. No, well, I'm I'll passionate. That's in the second. Thank, thank you. Yes. <laughs> no, very very passionate about pain management and pain relief, but not mm. just doing it in the big university hospitals in our ivory towers. I'm. I'm you know really driven to try and get this out into practice and help people who are perhaps not used to some of the drugs or there are new drugs coming through all the time and you know i'm in a position where yes i can use them look at them and and do all the research into them so passionate to take it out there and help our, our patients basically yeah big passion think, which is which is great i think um, unfortunately yeah. uh, pain relief is still very very much underutilized in uh mm. in practice yeah, uh, I'm probably not utilised at all in large animal practice. Do you think we, we, we've come an awful long way in the profession in quite a short space of time? And I think that's really commendable. I think that's really commendable. People are taking that on board and, and moving forward with it. But yeah, yeah, it, it's it's a bit scary to think that only a few years ago, you know, if you had a, a major abdominal surgery, you'd basically be sent home with a couple of aspirin for a few days. Yeah, now, yeah. You know, having had abdominal surgery myself, that wouldn't be enough. Thank you very much. So at least, no. we, yeah, we've moved no. on and we're recognising the need for it now, which is fab- really fabulous, have. fabulous. I, I'm, a, I'm a great fan of local anaesthetics. I, I use them uh, for pretty much every op and, and absolutely love them. I'm doing a... Um, an injection site sarcoma excision next weekend mm. or oh, next week rather uh, and i was going to put one of those soaker drains in mm, with, great uh, idea 
They're, they're a great idea. And you know, you can persuade people to use them. It is not just the analgesia effects, but it's the things that using using local anesthesia in cancer surgery, for example, improves mm. survival, you know. So yes. there, there's, yeah. there's, there's tremendous benefits from this little drug that costs a few pence a mil or whatever it is to, you know, yeah. really, really help things. And you get good client bonding as well because they're, they're amazed. Oh, he, he didn't sleep at all. And I've had clients actually very upset that their dog wasn't very quiet for a few days, which we'd promised them. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> they all had a good analgesia. So yeah, I feel it, quite it bad when I do a good job like that, I'm afraid. <laughs> Uh, no, but again, we, we were told uh, by one of our orthopedic lecturers that um, if you over analgese, oh, that, oh, oh you've got me. that one. Oh, yeah, you've, you've got me. You <laughs> over analgese, <laughs> oh, that they'll yeah. put weight on that leg and it yeah, could be fractured. Yeah. Absolutely. So I have two comments there. As you can tell, I'm going to go, oh, I'm going to get red in the face there. Do a bit I, of I, 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 I always <laughs> like it when my patients have a little bit of pain, just remember me by, you know, I think that's, that's a good thing, obviously. <laughs> but, but this thing about they'll suddenly use it. Okay, fine. Since when did we as a profession ever use pain control as an animal, you know, pain, sorry, as an animal control method? It's, uh, yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's crazy. It, that's it really essentially is. what we're doing. And, and I think we wouldn't do it to our kids, you know, we wouldn't do it no. to our wives, husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. Um, I suppose now isn't the time then to tell you the story of the practice I went to fairly recently. Ooh. Yes, go on and, then. Uh, the first case on the on the table, I was, I was there to look at, sort of give them an overview, a third party view as to what was going on and mm. how they were doing their anaesthesia and working their monitors and, and all that sort of stuff. And the first case on the table was a spike. And at the end of it, I thought, I'm a fraud. You know, I've, I've got all ticks on my on my clipboard here. This is that was that was perfect, mm. and they're paying me to be here. Oh dear. The next case was a castrate, and within the first two or three minutes, we had got serious problems showing everywhere. And the nurse immediately reached the isoflurane to turn the isoflurane up because the patient yes. wasn't deep enough. Yes, because anaesthesia is a submarine after all, yes. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I like that yeah. one. Thank yeah. you, Ian. And so I, I actually pulled the time out on surgery, which had everybody just stop. And, of course, in, in human medicine, that's generally accepted that any mm. can call a time out. Mm. Express a little bit like the airline industry, I think. Mm, mm. Um, express concerns, mm. etc. But uh, for for this third party that's been invited into the practice to tell the surgeon to step away from the table for a moment and let's sort out what's going on here. And the second case was a, was a cash rate. And I said to them, "Well, your first case was superb, so I'm presuming you you've used a similar analgesic protocol." No. We might send him home with a non-steroidal if he needs it. If he needs it. it. Mm. Look, if my nads ever get taken off, <laughs> I'm going to need a non-steroidal. I'm pleased to say that using certain analogies of, of stopping improper behaviour, yeah. either a, a punch or a kick or a knee to, to the group, <laughs> and, and briefly exploring um, sexuality uh. and... Um, and nervous impulses from the various sexual organs, which is theoretically why we're all here. Um, I'm just wondering where this sentence is going to be. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I'm waiting <laughs> for the, like the comma. Be, I'm, pleased to say, I'm pleased to say that they changed their anaesthesia protocols for castrates and went on to get a gold standard hospital award. Yeah, good for um, them. Fantastic. Um, from the powers that be that's so, what we can ask though isn't it we can ask that people are open to things and trying new things yeah. rather than the you know the, the other phrase i really enjoy is oh we've done this for 20 years so <laughs> right. you know it's always oh well, that's all right then. that's okay yes. Yes. Yeah, well i'm glad for you that's not your patients but yeah that's, absolutely that's right. so, yeah. so your patients have always been in this amount of pain is that what you're saying <laughs> there's not a single one that has been comfortable uh, right. know. you know we, we've really got to move on haven't we from from anesthesia success being they survive to actually they're comfortable <laughs> and their physiology is good and we don't make them worse you know i, I think we've really got to move on a little bit. yeah so, so, so to, to let's keep plugging thrive. away yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah i think exactly. we'd like to hope so yeah mm. we're, we're getting there we'll get there 
yeah, yeah. we will. I, I, I'm relying on the students coming through and taking the word out there and seeing the difference and we can discuss openly and they're not biased by, you know, views and things like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a really positive thing, really positive. Yeah. I, I think it is. And, and clients are also a bit more savvy now and they, mm. they know that, that there are uh, analgesics out there that they can use. They know that pain is uh, intolerable for their own point of view and, and they ask for it. They say, you know, my, my pet now, they're recognising my pet is in pain, not just, yeah. oh, he's old and he limps. Exactly, exactly. And yeah. I, you know, Sorry, Mike. I, Sorry, I didn't want to. I, I know, I know, <laughs> I know you're old and you're limp at the moment. I didn't mean, <laughs> I didn't mean to get at you. I'm so oh, sorry. Nice. That's, that's, that's quite I'm, all right. That's quite all right. Sort of from, I can take it. Can I, I, can I just ask, sorry, I was distracted for a moment, Mike, when you, you took a sip of gin. Yeah. Um, do, do you just want to take another sip of gin? Of course. Whenever. Can you, yeah, oh, whoa, whoa, stop, 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 stop. Something's fallen in it. The, the, no, really, there's crud in, in your gin glass. What? Flies or something. Oh, all of this? Yeah. <laughs> Is it, have you been to a wedding today? Is that confetti? No, no. I'll, what, show what you you what, I'll show you now how that got in there. Okay, then. Okay, so, gin lovers, this will give you a good clue. As to what I'm going to prepare tonight, cucumber. I mean, probably the easiest and most recognised um, gin in the UK, certainly, uh, that's distilled with cucumber, is good old favourite Hendrix. Unfortunately for me, I hate cucumber. So, I'm going to make Hendrix without cucumber. My glass. A nice big bowl of ice to keep that undiluted and cold for a while. My Hendrix. And then, because every household has got this particular ingredient tucked away in their cupboard, rose petals. So a good sprinkling of, sprinkling of rose petal in there. And actually, Hendrix Gin is also distilled with rose. So all I'm doing there is just supplementing the rose flavour there. Matching it with a nice neutral tonic. Mixing it all up, as usual, with, with my swizzle stick. And there we go. How delightful is that? Cheers. Mmm. Gorgeous. You don't need cucumber. Your gin yeah. is strewn with rose petals. It is indeed. Oh, I don't like dear. cucumber. Like a maiden's bed on her wedding night. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> I didn't realise you were so precious, Mike. It's, <laughs> it's coming out, isn't it? Oh, bless. Thinking, talking about scapa flow, um, I came across this the other day. Ooh. No, oh, that's good. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, it is a canal boat. Scapa flow is is um is where the German fleet was scuttled after the mm. First World War, was it not? Mm. And I noticed Sorry, could, yeah. <laughs> Mike. Yes. Is, is that is that a, a medical textbook? I just saw it go back to the previous picture there. Uh, greasing the stern gland in a narrow boat. Now, <laughs> is is there something called a stern gland in, in a narrow well, boat? Well, or, actually, or are for, they on a narrow uh, boat greasing for, some bodies? Fortunately for gland. us, Julian. <laughs> fortunately for us, we have an expert in it. Um, yes, we do indeed go off on the canals on boats and have fun either renting them or yes, we did. Up until a few months ago, have our own boat. We 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 sold it, but that's only because um, yeah, change of jobs and all the rest of it. But we're looking to rebuy once we once we're allowed after all this coronavirus stuff. That's fantastic. So, yeah, I, I should, is, I should um, just recap momentarily because uh, what the people who who are without video missed there was Mike showing a couple of pictures of of sunken narrow boats, <laughs> and it turns out that that Ian is a 
a narrow boatist boaterist a boat <laughs> narrowist. No, no, no. <laughs> i just mess around on the water yeah he messes about <laughs> on the water like who sees his holidays now is the time yeah, that, that, yeah. that sort of thing that sort of thing i i love narrow boats i went on um I went on a few narrowboat holidays with friends uh, 25, 30 years ago. Mm. Yeah. Canals, yeah. Canals are fantastic. It's the quickest yeah, way to slow down. It really is. So, it's uh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a true drink driving holiday, isn't it? It really is. Ask it really Dominic is. Cummings. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are, they are great. There's a beautiful pub along the um, Shropshire Union Canal called the Bar Bridge Inn that did the best ever garlic mushrooms. Oh yes, and I've eaten the, there many at many a Sunday. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's on the on the junction with the little cut that goes across to Middlewich. So that's that's yes. the one, Middlewich, yeah. Natwich, and Bastardwich, isn't it? That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Maybe the last one I, wrong. I, I used to moor just down the road from there, just down the cut from there at uh, Venetian Marina, and we used to go up to Clangloth and from there, and it'd be a lovely week away. Oh, can't be too beautiful can't be times. Too. Yeah, nice. absolutely. Quite, quite expensive now, though, isn't it, to to hire a barge? Um, I think so. I haven't hired one in ages, I have to say. But yes, it looks into three figures in the middle of the summer. But if they sleep eight people and you've got a load of people on there, you know what? It's a lot cheaper than going to Spain or wherever. So, uh, yeah. It's true, not? actually. And it is the most relaxing holiday. It's fantastic. Love it. So you haven't tried taking a narrow boat onto, uh, onto the open sea? No, I, I think that would be... Um, that would be brave, shall we say? <laughs> there was a, there was a book I read a few years back. I think it was called Narrow Boat to Carcassonne. Okay. This this crazy I've couple seen, that huh? decided, yeah, mm. and they crazy. crossed the channel, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And, and yeah, uh, there's no keel, is there? This is all flat. Yeah, it, it's it? flat bottom. You've got like two inches above the water, and um, yeah, any wave would swamp you. That that takes a lot of. Um, I was going to say balls, but that's rude. Guts, that's the word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> took, took a lot of something. And, uh, they, took they a lot of something. It. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bless them. That would be an adventure, wouldn't it? That would be really be great. I can think of other adventures I'd prefer to do, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And, and we should say for listeners that other adventures are available. All right, yeah, indeed. But they yeah. are indeed, yeah. Indeed. yeah. And, and talking of other adventures are available, we didn't say that other pain management books are available although i have to say yeah i don't think they're as good as that one and they're not as good they're really not as good as that one but the only thing i couldn't find in this book and i think it was probably uh too new or too theoretical even for for this book is really long acting local anesthetics so liposomal Mm. that. are you using that at all ian um is the VDS listening? Um, yeah, I <laughs> um, we, we we have toyed with that. Yes, so mm-hmm. there's a long acting bupivacaine, uh, 72 hour acting bupivacaine available in the states and licensed for use in animals in the states. And we keep saying, please get it licensed over here. Um, it's it's very interesting stuff. It seems to work quite well, but you can only put it into soft tissues. You can't use it in the epidural space or any right. any fancy blocks or anything like this. It's just for right. infiltration. Could but you like put you it say, in this at all? I, I I wouldn't because of the preservative that's in there. Um, right. I don't know. We've done enough work to say that mm. that's good or not. Some people have, but I, I would be reluctant in clinical mm. cases. I think I've got other ways of doing it. Um, but your, your, you know, your sarcoma cap, I'm assuming it's a cat would be a great yeah. one for that. Um, yeah, it would be that kind of thing where I'd want it. Or, or tikas. I do a lot of total ear canal ablation. Yes, yes, it's very they're painful. horribly painful. And yeah, they, that would be great for those. Yeah. Again, I tend to use um, urinary catheters, cat urinary catheters mm. that, that I fenestrated and use those as a little sort of soaker drain and yeah. inject bupivacaine every six to eight hours in there. Yeah, they work beautifully. They work really yeah, nicely. Really good. So a, yeah, long acting, a long agree. acting one would work very well for that particular cat then, if you could just give it one yes, shot it would. and, and it? let it go, rather than bring it back in to continually top up the dose. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah. For, for home use it would be ideal, wouldn't it? Absolutely yeah, it ideal. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We don't have many things that are long acting for home use that work well, particularly in cats. So uh, it can be a problem. Yeah. And there's a there's a sort of vaccine, isn't there? An immunotherapy coming out for, for pain. But that's been coming out for a long time and it's not quite here yet, is it? There's there's lots of kind of stem cell therapies and lots of yes anti TNF antibodies and things like this. So this is following the way that human medicine is going, 
where um, you know monoclonal antibody therapy is becoming common in things like rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel mm. disease, things like this. So yeah, we're, it's interesting that it's going to be coming out. I think for for joint pain at some stage, it's it's really whether there's enough um, financial clout behind it to get it licensed, isn't it? Yes. That's unfortunately that 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 really that's, is an important thing. That's what it's, it comes down to. I, I remember yeah. a few years ago. Uh, I used to use an awful lot of, of the spot-on fentanyl recoverer. Mm. Uh, and I, I, I had no problems with it. It was brilliant stuff. It used to work very, very well. But I believe they didn't sell it enough, did they? It wasn't that's, a, that's, that's the problem. That's where you can't get it. So it's still licensed, but um, yeah, just it's not made anymore. Yeah. I, I, again, I guess people had problems with it because you have to wear gloves to pet your dog officially if you put recoverer on them. And, uh, you know, is that ideal for home use? I don't know. I don't know. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a moot point, really. Mm. We'll see. We'll see what else comes in. But I think you're right. It's the drug deliveries that's going to change things going forward that's that's the interesting area at the moment how yeah, we present yeah. the drugs absolutely and, and how we can reduce hospitalization mm. stays as well because if we're hospitalizing just to provide analgesia mm. and we can get them home more comfortable earlier then uh, oh. th that's good for the pets good for the owners isn't it absolutely although don't forget i'm the one who will jump on the bandwagon i do lots of pain clinics as well and if i get a dog coming to the pain clinic who's got really quite bad pain and nothing seems to be controlling it i i will happily hospitalize those to break that cycle and you know give some hmm. strong analgesics for a day or, or so and then just break that cycle so i think we need to be prepared to go both ways as well but yeah, yeah. you're absolutely right get them home they're more comfortable there would, would you put would, that dog on fluids in Oh, you just know. Oh, yes, absolutely. I, I personally, I prefer to put a dog on ta on a table and administer fluids. But yes, if you want to stick it on a bag of fluids, that's fine. Uh, I, I do. I should have bought it balance, lung. I, well, I, I should have bought it lung. I do, I do have a um, I do have a picture of a Chihuahua sat on a five litre bag of Hartmann's. <laughs> I tell students this is a dog on fluids. Okay. <laughs> I, I've I've also got a Chihuahua that same Chihuahua with a bottle of isoflurane held above its head. And I tell them this is a dog under anesthesia. So you know, it's, it's the, these little things that really we, 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 we don't say. Students very quickly learn not to say these things to me. So, so how do you yeah. knock that one out? Yes. yes, yes, yes. And, and, can you, and can you reverse it? Yeah. Yes. Very, very, oh, oh, very, oh, very good. Oh, dear. I knew this was a mistake. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. As I say, Mike, Mike Tyson knocks things out, and the only thing you reverse is your car. No, we, we, we anesthetize and antagonize, but no, that's, that's fine, guys. You know, we, we all have our standards, don't we? Well, Mike and I have been antagonizing. I hope it's worked. <laughs> but, but please don't, don't reverse out of the show. Well, well, the, the, the I was going to say, hang on, hang on, I think Sainsbury's is at the door, and I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> I think the key thing here, the key lesson for that, though, Julian, is that yes, yes we have been antagonising, and note our guest is still here. Yeah. So whilst yeah. we might have um, disrupted the actions of the original, <laughs> it's still there. And, and he seems fairly comfortable. He does indeed. He does indeed. Uh, I will drink to that, Ian. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> <It's a pleasure. laughs> So, yeah, can, can I can I rack your brains a bit, Ian? Because you can you can try. I've not got many. Now, uh, I I'm a great fan of Duncan Lascelles. I've been to most of his lectures, uh, and, and and before I before I met you, he was my hero for for, uh, for analgesia. <laughs> Obviously, it's you now. Um, <laughs> oh, I, I, now, I feel strangely uncomfortable, but <laughs> he he convinced me, and I've done some further reading about it, that tramadol doesn't work as an effective pain relief in, yeah. in dogs because yeah. they, they lack the, is it Delta nerve receptors? Uh, it's, well, it's and, the, and, and yet people are still using it mm. a you, lot. You know, Julian, are you doing this deliberately? It's, it's, Do you want it's me to so tell you about Czech, the Czech Republic? T tell me about the Czech Republic. Go on. I wasn't doing it deliberately. No, I just, oh, I had this bugbear that people are doling out tramadol for dogs and it doesn't mm. bloody well work because. Well, it, well, well absolutely. I, we, I was do, I've been doing um, a number of CPD um, sessions and teaching sessions in, in Prague with some, some fabulous uh, people. 
We've been talking about hypertension in cats and how to measure all of that. We've been doing workshops where we've we've had patients in, and we've been we've been practicing our skills on those patients. And there was a desire for us to move it into um, anesthesia, which I'm reasonably comfortable with on the on the monitoring side of things. And it turns out that tramadol is the go-to analgesic for dogs in the Czech Republic. And mm. in some, some circumstances, I had, I had one girl in tears describing, asking me for my help as to what she was seeing on her monitors and what was likely to be happening to this particular patient. And this was a three-hour cancer op. And the only analgesic she had got, the only control she'd got was the isoflurane, and the only analgesic she'd been given was tramadol. It, only about, what is it, 15% of dogs could actually metabolize tramadol. It's a pro-drug. So O-desmethyl tramadol is the active ingredient. Mm. So only, uh, yeah, about one in 15 dogs, something like that, can actually metabolize it for a start. But those that do metabolize it, we're, we're fairly convinced now it's altering behavior rather than actually providing direct analgesia. So, yeah, I, I think people say to me it works or it doesn't work. So that's whether they can metabolize it or not. But those who can metabolize it, all it's doing is actually altering their behavior. So they behave differently. So people assume it's analgesia. Right. OK. So, yeah, yeah. The people think, oh, he's calmed down or he's... Yeah. Not, yeah. not as restless or it's, whatever. It's the old story with ACP and firework phobia that, yeah, yes. okay, they're acting differently, therefore they must be okay. But there's some very good electrophysiological studies. And again, um, yeah. Duncan has, has been leading this. Duncan the cells has been leading a lot of this and absolutely showing that no, there's no analgesia. But yeah, I, it worries me because I, I worry that there's a whole population of dogs out there who, yes, are perceived to be comfortable but actually still in pain um yeah tramadol's cheap as chips it's it is a license it is. it's yeah. not controlled so you know send them home with it why not in theory yeah. it's doing a good job as i say it's fine in cats i think there's a lot more evidence yeah. in cats but not dogs yeah. I'm, I'm afraid yeah. i'd take dogs off it i wouldn't put my dogs on it you know no it's, I tend I tend to use a lot of gabapentin these days not not personally because i react to it well <laughs> okay. but, um but in in, in dogs uh, and amantadine Mm -hmm. as well and I, I, I sort of I, I usually use gabapentin as a as a first drug you know for, for dogs that are already on non-steroidals and, and yeah paracetamol yeah. and, and nutraceuticals and yeah. uh, other other perhaps more uh, complementary medicines and then I then put them onto gabapentin mm -hmm. uh, and I get some good responses is that um yeah yeah it's a nice, nice drug Absolutely. It certainly decreases activity within the CNS. So yeah, it's been shown to be efficacious for treatment of pain, uh, non uh, sorry, osteoarthritis pain alongside non -steroidals. So again, Duncan's shown that quite nicely. Um, and yeah, if we've got true neuropathic pain, then it would be my, my go-to drug, actually my first choice. Not that we can always spot and diagnose neuropathic pain. Sometimes we're, you know, it's a tricky one, but yeah, no, that's on the list. Um, and I'm using a lot more pre-gablin now, which is kind of the more refined version of gabapentin. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding I'm getting, uh, it is unfortunately a more expensive drug, but I'm finding I'm getting more analgesia and less the sedation that you can sometimes get with, with gabapentin. I do warn owners that sometimes they're a little bit sleepy for a day or two, but they yeah. usually work through it. But I, apart from that, I, yeah. I normally suggest for the first three days, they're on noctadose only. Okay. Uh, and then... I, yeah, I, I, helps, I, I, yeah I, I, I tend to just throw it in there and, and get it going. I, I want my patients to be as comfortable as possible. But what I do always try and do is only change one thing at a time. Mm. Sometimes with these complex pain cases, you're yeah. not really sure which of this cacophony of drugs that they're already on is doing a good job or not. Absolutely. So I'll remove one or add one at a time and only change one thing and then yeah. reassess and get the owners to assess using Helsinki pain scale or something like that as well. That could be really helpful. How much more expensive is pre gabalin Ian? Um, where I was working about three times the cost, um, right. which for a big dog can be quite significant, you know, yeah. it can be quite a bit. But if you get control of that pain, another thing I've done a couple of times is then switch them back to gabapentin once we've, again, broken that cycle. I think sometimes we're a little bit wimpy with treating pain to start with. We should go in hard, get control, and then back off. I think it's easier rather than just nibbling away at the edges, personally.
Mm-hmm. Because actually what we've got to do is control that um, that pain wind-up, haven't we? The mm-hmm. cascade of, uh, yeah. of, of pain yeah. uh, uh, Absolutely. mediators. Absolutely. I think by the time I see cases in the pain clinic, of course, they, they've been through the mill, bless them, and everyone's been trying very hard. But absolutely, we've got central sensitization. So now they perceive a lot of things as painful, which other dogs wouldn't do. So perhaps I overkill, but try and reset the system slightly. And that's mm-hmm. where all the complementary therapies come in as well, like acupuncture and things like that. They can really help. Yeah. I think another thing is that people who, owners who, who uh, agree to, to, to have acupuncture done on their pets are often more, I don't want to say caring owners, but, but more perhaps conscientious in terms of uh, monitoring the other parts of their, of their dog's treatment. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, I think it's all about communication. And again, in the pain clinics, this is half of what I do. Half of my time is spent communicating as to what we're trying to do, as to the fact that this is a journey, the fact that chronic or pathological pain, unfortunately, is likely to be there long term, and we're controlling it as a partnership. And I think, you know, that that's really what I try and get Mm. over to the people who bring their dogs to me. And uh, hopefully we hopefully we get there in the end. Had some of the clients react to the the idea that you're going to have acupuncture? Um, they don't. They they usually don't believe that their dog or cat will sit there and accept it. You know mm-hmm. that that one needle and yes, they will be going around the around the walls. But I got plenty of videos of cats, particularly who actually settle down, curl up, and go to sleep with. 12 14 needles in the backs and things like that because it's giving them the relief and that that burst of endorphins and and kefalins and dynorphins that they really enjoy so it's fantastic to see that it really is great to see that so yeah, yeah you get some dogs who won't absolutely but it's usually because the owners are so wound up that the dogs are picking up on that and they <laughs> and they it. wince every time a needle's put in that's right <laughs> I, I find a big problem still is um, is convincing owners that their elderly dog or, or cat with um, with a, with a, a lameness mm. isn't lame because it's getting old. It's lame because it's in pain. Yeah, because yeah. it's getting old. Uh, and, and there's this feeling, isn't there, that old dogs just do slow down, don't they, when they get older? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have given and not charged <laughs> for um, meloxicam for two or three days. And I ask the owners to come back, usually people that I know and ones that, you know, and, and actually knowing full well that this is a lost leader, but they're going to see such a dramatic difference. And yeah, yeah. The, the number of, we all know the phrase, he's like a puppy again. Yeah, no, and it's wonderful to see that actually, isn't it? That, that this, this, the penny drops and they suddenly yeah. think, great, he, he's, he's my dog again. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And that's why we have dogs, because they're like puppies, and that's what we all like, isn't it? You yes. know? So let's face it, that's what we want. Uh, yeah. Bless them. And, and cats as well. You know, clients will come in with a 14-year-old cat, and uh, they'll yeah. say, Do, he has lost weight because he's just not jumping up onto the counter and finishing yes. the food as much. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and you, you put him on a uh, meloxicam, and they, they come back a few weeks later and say, you, you utter bastard, he's fat again now. Yep. So <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> So it's it's nice. It's nice when people get that. But I think the word is out there. There's a, you know various sites like the Osteoarthritis Alliance site who've got a number of very moving videos which actually bring it home to you when you go on their site and have a look. So yeah, I, I encourage people to go and make their own decisions and I will support them. But yeah, it's important. I think we, we voice what we think is happening all the time. Mm. I guess I, I'm kind of trying to address the bigger problem in that we all know there's a very large population of dogs out there that we've just been talking about who aren't on any kind of analgesia at mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. And I think I, I want to start there kind of thing, start at the grassroots and then move forward to these techniques because these techniques are fantastic in the right cases, but have we explored everything else and not yes. put the dog through stuff and, and what have you. However, there's still a lack of big trials with some of these, um, these techniques. And that's what I think we need to set out and do. But then you think about things like paracetamol. We don't actually have any evidence that paracetamol works in dogs, although 
you know, clinically and anecdotally, we know it um, works very absolutely. nicely. Absolutely, I can, so, I can um, tell you a whole wealth of anecdotal uh, evidence yeah, there. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But we're not going to get the money to do that large scale trial because paracetamol is pennies, and you know, unfortunately, whether we like it or not, money money talks in this yeah. uh, in this business. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, I've had I've had two um, two cases of paracetamol poisoning. Um, okay obviously in cats um, mm, mm. so any so any anyone watching this do not ever 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 never to a cat give paracetamol to a cat don't give any medication to a dog or cat unless you've been expressly told to by a vet <laughs> absolutely no paracetamol in cats and of course we do have a licensed form of paracetamol in dogs um, we do we do with, well, with, with codeine, codeine. Hardale, that's with right. codeine. now the codeine doesn't tend to do anything it doesn't. It's another pro drug, as is yes. tramadol. So it's also there in such homeopathic amounts that actually I think it would be, would be very pushed to 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 see an effect there. And interestingly, yeah. the dose of pardel, the dose of paracetamol, is is very high compared to what most of us would use as well. It's a, it is an huge. interesting drug. It's an interesting drug. Something like mm. forty four mix per cake three times a day, I think, off the top of my head. So yeah, it is doses. absolutely a lot yeah, more yeah. higher than the normal. Uh, and of course, I, I I grew up as a vet using uh, good old prednisolone, poorly leg yes. tablets. Yes, absolutely. Um, a wonderful combination the, of a non-steroid and steroids. The, the one drug that we tell everybody not to do, but you know what? It really works. It really works. My old boss used to use it. I, I'd come yeah. to a, a new grad and say, "Oh, oh, we were told not to. Oh, you can't. You can't. It's better, isn't it?" It's a lot better. You know, yeah, I, it is a lot. there's nothing wrong. I, I I actually do use it, and I use similar combinations, but usually in palliative care cases. Yeah. So end of yeah. life stage cases, things like that. I I mm. want to make those patients as I, I want them to be as comfortable as I want to be comfortable when I get to that stage of my life. So sure. whatever it takes is what I will do. So BLT works really nicely. Unfortunately, mm. it shouldn't. <laughs> it really <laughs> it shouldn't. should kill them, it really but it shouldn't. doesn't. It's really good stuff. <laughs> Frustratingly. Oh, I need to go I, back to the drawing board. I think they oh, do. I don't really. know. It's about quality of life. It's not necessarily about quantity. And that's it's a big discussion I have a lot of time, a lot of times with owners. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're a good man for that. It's, um, it's absolutely true. Uh, I think yeah, that's the we, only aspect of my life which is good. Everything else is rubbish. <laughs> you know, I'm an awful man and everything personally. But yeah. <laughs> I, I always think I, I never I never just treat a dog or a, or a cat. You, you're always treating. The family, aren't you? Mm. Treating the the yeah. unit, the 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 animal human bond there, and yeah. people want pets because of the love they give them, and the love they can get back, yeah. and they miss out on an awful lot of that when their pet is in pain. Yeah. And if we can give them back that 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 time, especially mm. towards the end of their lives, yeah. where they're comfortable that they're doing the very best for their pet, and most importantly of all. They're not in pain. Yeah. Then and we've done everything we can as vets, I think. We forget how upsetting it is for the owners. And something that I try and take time to do in every pain clinic is ask the owner if they're okay. Mm. And uh, many people will actually break down. It gets very emotional because yeah. nobody asks them. You know, they're going through this. They've got It's like they've got a very sick child. They're getting very stressed by it. And nobody asks them if they're okay. And that, I guess, would be my big tip of the evening that, uh, you know, if you're seeing some painful patients, ask the owners how they're doing, you know, yeah. and how you can support them as well. Because yeah. they're relying on us for that support. And I think it's a really important part of what we do. That's, that's, that's really nice, actually, because that, that's sort of like that whole one health thing, isn't it? Mm. It's, mm. it's not only the holistic view for the, for the pet themselves, yeah. But it's taking into account that whole as Julian says family unit. And yeah. somebody actually saying to you, Are you okay, mate? Mm. How, do, mm. how are you feeling about this? Yeah. That, but that's interesting. I mean, I, I'm, I'm rather intrigued to see at this at this point um, what Julian's veterinary ramblings CPD certificate looks like. Actually, you know, we've, we've been covering a lot of ground and a lot of, lot of drinks as well, but um, okay. we feel very strongly that we're. We're providing with a CPD. Yeah, we, we, um, we believe that we're providing CPD as according to the RCBS guidelines and regulations. Oh, this this is quite important then, isn't it? This thing yeah, I, I didn't really realise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, thought, I thought it was it's just a drink amongst mates, but no. Well, we're, just, we're just three bull <laughs> old gits, crap, aren't we? Otherwise, so but yeah. here we go. So I've done this. Now this is some. This is a, a certificate. <laughs> okay. Of massive learning. Okay. And it says it says this certifies that. 
you looked, listened, learned, and reflected. You see. Oh, and very good. Well done. Uh, it's got eighth of July, twenty twenty. Signed, me and him. Excellent. Perhaps we should actually finish the CPD because obviously one of the the RCVS regulations for CPD is not just the either the presenting of the CPD or the the listening to the CPD, but one of the most critical elements of the CPD, and which is why veterinary ramblings is going to qualify as veterinary CPD, is that we all take a moment to reflect on the CPD delivered and the the, the quality stuff on analgesia um that we've we've mm. we've listened to this evening so um i think in that case we, we should probably take a moment to reflect let's do that ian are you sure you haven't been watching our previous <laughs> sorry <laughs> well, <I'm asleep. laughs> I'm so sorry, I had a bit of a sneeze there. I apologize. <laughs> it's, it's quite funny about how you're organized on my screen. You both stared at me, which is really quite disturbing. <laughs> do, you, do you want a joke? Are we at that time of the evening? Well, I, I got a couple, so I thought I'd get one out of the way now and uh, do another one later. Well, okay, if you want to. Because uh, tell us. I, I, Julia? I rack my brains for, for, for jokes about um, about pain. And I've got two crackers that always make me laugh, which is great because no one else will. So <laughs> one's one's the old Tommy Cooper joke, and I you know, here's here's, to, here's to Tommy Cooper. Great, yeah. Yeah. Very, I'll, very I'll, underrated. I'll have a drink to Tommy. Yeah. So this, this is one about the, the, the guy who goes to a doctor and he says, he says oh, I felt I felt I was sick. You can only do it in the Tommy Cooper accent. I felt out of the stairs. I don't know what I've done. Could, could you do it? Could, Julian, could you do it in a Tommy Cooper accent, then, please? <laughs> For people who are on audio only, I see. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so, he's like, I, I, I felt out of the stairs. I don't know what I've done with it. It hurts when I press there. It? <laughs> oh, it's agony when I press there. It? Oh, oh, it really hurts when I press my knee. And the doctor said, yeah, you, you broke your finger. <laughs> oh, dear. It was better in the original, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're being very polite, Ian. I know, I'm, I'm trying to be. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke we can tell before the watershed. The, the okay. other one. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair <laughs> so, I, thought, I thought it was the other Tommy Cooper joke that you were going to tell. Which one was the other one? There you go to the doctor. Said, doctor, don't, I can't do Tommy Cooper, by the way. It's very good. Doctor, doctor, it hurts when I do that. And the doctor says, well, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. You were better. You were better. Oh, boy, right. You, you win that there. Yeah. The way you tell them. <laughs> it's the way you tell them. To, oh, be, sure. to be sure. So is, so, that the, is that the joke for the evening then, Julian? I've got, I've got another joke later. Shall I tell that one now or a bit later? Well, should we tell it now? It's a god Thor. He's flying along. The hammer. What's, what's the hammer's name? It's um, Molnir, isn't it? Molnir held in front of him. He's flying through the skies and he sees this beautiful, comely wench tending to her geese. And he thinks, oh, I've heard of that, or whatever gods tend to think. And so he, he, he lands on the ground and turns into mortal garb. I'm not quite sure what a garb is, but anyway, he turns into. <laughs> And, uh, and he goes off and he smooth talks her as only a god could. And, and yeah, 10 minutes later, he's on the haystack with her making mad, passionate love. And they're at it for hours and hours until eventually she just collapses, dead faint, exhausted. And he lies on his back for a while thinking, oh, that was great. Oh, that's lovely. That was just sacred. Hang on, he thinks, this isn't good because you know, here am I, a god, and she's going to now expect this from every man she meets and she's going to be terribly uh, upset because she's never going to have the same experience in her life. <sighs> I'm going to come clean. So he shakes her awake and he says, look, uh, I'm sorry, I've, I've got to come clean. You, I'm, I'm Thor. And she says, you're Thor. I don't think Thor, I've only been on the pit for a week. <laughs> oh dear. Oh no. <laughs> I, oh dear. I think, 
I think on, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> on that bombshell. On that, on that bombshell, bombshell. On that bombshell note. Uh, what we should probably do is say thank you very much, Ian Self. And oh, thank you very much, everybody, for watching Veterinary Ramblings. <laughs> don't Ian, be- thank you. Thank you so much, Ian. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, it's a real pleasure. Uh, Apart from the joke, but it was a real <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> the trouble is, I'm going to tell that now. That's the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you you do. You take yeah. that one from the show. As oh, I will. You okay. Use that one, Ian. That's great. <laughs> if, if you've enjoyed uh, the show as much as we have, please click like and share and share it on Facebook. Uh, tell all your friends. Tell all your friends to, to join in. And uh, we look forward And buy. <laughs> and buy pain <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We'd like to wish you all all the best. And may your dog go with you. May your dog go with dog you. Go with you. <laughs> Cheers. Ian. You, that, that was thank fantastic. You so thank you so much. much. No so problem. Thank, Absolutely amazing. Do you know, I, I could, I'm sorry, I could, I could just chat to you for, for hours and hours and hours yeah. <laughs> about all sorts of rubbish, but about analgesia, most importantly. I just, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. fascinated by the subject. Yeah, no, same here. And it's very rewarding, very, very frustrating as well at times. But, you know, I'm so passionate about it. I, I, it's what I'm going to, it's, it's what gets me out of bed in the morning kind of thing. So, yeah, cool. really, really I, enjoy I think, it. I think if we get one thing right in surgery, it should be that the pet should feel no pain yeah absolutely. yeah yeah absolutely i think they need to be comfortable we need to stop dogs going into this chronic pain state which what is it 60 percent of people having an operation on the nhs experience some form of pathological or chronic pain and you know we, we can do better than that so uh, yeah absolutely well, I, I was in a hip replacement op the other week and hmm. um that was an local that, was mm. an d- d- that, that could explain it so i phoned truder and she said you were doing some hip hop <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Yo, yo, yo. What's that? What's that? Oh, What's that? oh dear. Yeah, but what, what was quite freaky, in fact, in fact, if we, if we skip on, um, the gentleman doing the surgery is our guest next week. Oh, oh fantastic. Excellent. Uh, that, that's uh, Andy, Andy Langdown. Andy Langdown, it is indeed. Oh. Hey, Ian, have you enjoyed yourself this evening? Yeah really have thank you very much for inviting me it's been really oh, fun. thank you ian oh, thank you would, you, thank would you. you please come back another time uh I, I certainly um if i survive the next few weeks i will definitely <laughs> yes absolutely yeah no not a problem i'm happy to so uh no, good please. luck with everything i hope it all goes well in your little enterprises and um <laughs> see you all at the next it, virtual it conference or real conference we, we just enjoy now you're pointing at me on your screen that's the trouble i don't know where he is. okay it's his hit him i uh, got him yeah so are him. you are you coming to manchester for bsava next year Ian? uh plan is yes absolutely um i'm still chair of scientific so i guess i get to go for free anyway so yeah absolutely so, oh, i mean not, not that's oh. why i'm going obviously but i'm going to see i look forward there. to seeing you there i'll buy you a guinness cool you're on i'll see you there what well, is this <laughs> is this when we go down the uh, the curry mile Oh, yeah. That's a special place. Yeah, I've been down there a few times. Absolutely. Oh, no, I'm getting hungry. Guys, I'm going to disappear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks very much for inviting me, as I say, and have fun. Um, Thanks so much for being Anything else, just give me a shout. Okay. Thank you, mate. You've, you've added Thank a you. whole load to this. Um, no worries. No really worries. Really Cheers. Thank you very much indeed. Brilliant. Take brilliant. care. Thank See you, you next time. Good Bye. night. Take care. Good night. Bye. Good night. Cheers. Cheers. What a mate. Crack- what a cracking wow. It was fantastic, wasn't it? Wasn't that good? Do, do you know, I, I could I could talk to Ian for days and days. Ian. I really could. He's, he's brilliant. We really hope you've enjoyed this week's episode with the wonderful Ian Self. Thanks again, Ian, for joining us tonight. And most importantly, thank you. Thank you for making it to season two of Veterinary Ramblings. Hey, we really appreciate your support so far. But if you'd like to support us even further, then please make your way over to our Facebook page as we recently launched a Kickstarter with loads of amazing things up for grabs. Absolutely. There's pin badges. 
brilliant badges, wonderful badges. Those photos, those wonderful black and white photos that Phil did. Do you remember those photos from Phil? Well, Phil has very kindly offered us some photos there so you can get your hands on some of those beautiful black and white photographs of the gorillas and the hippo and things like that. And, uh, and then, of course, there's uh, Georgie Hollis's prints. Yes, those wonderful little Valois sheep. Were they Valois? Oh, they're wonderful, cute, cute little sheep that look like characters from Return of the Jedi. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks so, again for listening. See you next thank, week. Yeah, thank you very much indeed for listening. And we will see you next week. And uh, may your dog go with you. May your dog go with you. Cheers. <laughs>